First story. After years of NC with my abusive golden sister, she came to my home begging for reconciliation. After our cheating mom kicked her out for cheating with her boyfriend, who was also sister's bio dad. After refusing, she confessed to cheating with my husband and then failed to recognize him. On a throwaway since my family knows and stalks my SM. I 26F have been in no contact with my sister Cheryl 24F or mother 57F since I turned 18. Our parents divorced when I was 14, when my mom's constant favoritism and enabling of Cheryl's abuse of me would not stop. My mom excused it as every parent has their favorite. But Cheryl took delight in stealing from me, destroying my things, and using me as a physical and emotional punching bag. My dad, after years of trying to force family counseling, mental health evaluations, and family interventions, kept enabling and, at times, felt like encouraging Cheryl. My dad treated divorce as a last-ditch effort to try and save what was left of my childhood. My mom demanded full custody of Cheryl in exchange for giving my dad 80-20 of me. It was a rough battle, and he really did try to limit my custody time with mom. At 16, I was able to stay with my dad full-time and only see mom and Cheryl occasionally or at school. I suspect my mom wanted 80-20 of me to keep me around as Cheryl's punching back, but Cheryl's power over me lessened the instant I had the power to just walk away. It's funny. Cheryl seemed obsessed with taking from me. New phone? Taken. New tablet? Taken. Once we were both in high school and I lived with my dad full-time, she couldn't blatantly steal from me anymore. Didn't stop her from trying. I had one boyfriend in high school, whom she tried to seduce but failed. He told me immediately, and I was weirded out by it. When I went to college, she e-stalked me and found out if I was dating anyone. Had two boyfriends in college, and she tried the same thing. Both times, they told me about Cheryl's attempts and shot her down. This part might need explanation. Cheryl is conventionally attractive, like from across the room. But since she was a teenager, she has had a hygiene issue. She showers once every two weeks, and uses a combination of scented hand lotion and perfume that combines with her bow into a new mega stench versus covering up. My last college boyfriend remarked that when she put her hand on his shoulder, he was immediately grossed out by her nails. When I was in college, Cheryl also attempted to get a credit card in my name, but I had a lock on my credit, courtesy of my father, who feared my mom would try this first. So, needless to say, I'm not impressed with my sister or my mom. Last night, I got a weird call from my Aunt Janice 64F, my mom's sister. I haven't talked to this woman in nearly a decade, and suddenly she's calling me. She asked me what I heard. I heard nothing, so I was confused. She was instantly like, good, Cheryl needs a place to stay. Your mom kicked her out. I was immediately like, excuse me, no? Janice then kept begging me to let Cheryl stay at my place, at least for a few days, for my mom to cool down. I told Janice that I haven't talked to Cheryl, my mom, or her in years, that you are all strangers to me, and last time we all talked, you weren't my favorite people. Janice then kept saying, family helps family, and, it's just for a few days, it'll be fine. I finally blocked the number, but I did get a confused call from cousins confused that I cut my sister and mom off, as if it happened recently and not almost a decade ago. The cousins, from my mom's side, rarely talked to me, so they were just as confused as I was and wanted clarification. I'm debating on telling them the details, but I'm thinking of just telling them it's not their business. But I can't help but think I should have handled the call with my aunt better. Ada for how I told my aunt that I wanted nothing to do with my mom and sister. Update. I talked to two of my cousins over the phone and explained that I've been in no contact with my mom and sister since I was 18. I still saw them both a handful of times, but never interacted with them directly. As suggested, I gave a cliff note version of what happened with my sister and mom that made me want to cut them both off. One cousin said figures, and the other said, makes sense. Aunt sent a message via Facebook Messenger saying, I had no idea it was that bad. She did, and that she would leave me alone about it from now on. Overall, I felt good starting Friday and continuing until noon today. My husband and I work from home, and we were both surprised when our ring doorbell said we had someone buzzing the front door. I checked the camera. And yup, it's my sister Cheryl with two suitcases. I went to the door and kept the screen door closed and locked, but opened the front door. I could still smell her weird bow through the screen door, so her hygiene has not improved since I last knew her. Cheryl tried to go. Hey sis, all bubbly, and like half my childhood didn't happen. I asked what she wanted. She said she and mom got into a fight, wouldn't say what the fight was about, and asked to stay with me. I said, absolutely not, and she started crying. Then she said she didn't want to tell me this, but she and my husband have been having a six-month affair, 
and that she couldn't hold it in anymore, and that blood sticks with blood. It was at that moment that my husband rounded the corner and said, Say what? My sister looked confused and asked who the hell the man behind me was, and I almost laughed because I realized what happened. Since Thanksgiving onward, my husband has grown a small beard for the first time. Most of his pictures on social were of him cleanly shaven, so of course Cheryl would have no idea what he looked like with a beard, I said. That's my husband. And she tried to recover. It was sad and pathetic. I simply said, bye Cheryl, and closed the door. Ten minutes of her continually buzzing the ring and knocking, pleading, and she finally left. I called both cousins and asked what the hell this is all about, and why my mom kicked Cheryl, her favorite child out. One cousin only knew the bare bones, but the other knew the details. When my parents first divorced, there was a guy my mom brought in almost immediately who I call Scumbag Tom. His showing up and the start of the divorce felt highly suspect, but he was always a weird guy that I never liked being around. I did ask my dad if he thought mom cheated on him with Tom, and he said Tom was the least of his worries and the lowest of his priorities when it came to the divorce. Long story short, Cheryl slept with Tom. Mom found out, kicked Cheryl out, and Tom stayed, swearing Cheryl tricked him somehow. Just Cheryl staying super classy, and mom found the one thing she wouldn't tolerate Cheryl doing. God, I'm glad I cut these people out of my life. Update. The last 12 hours have been a roller coaster. I talked to my dad again today, had him visit, and told him what Cheryl had done. Dad sat down on the couch and started laughing, crying and shaking his head. I was really worried because I was afraid he was having a medical issue. He finally caught his breath and told me the family secret. During the divorce, my mom was apparently extremely vicious and even attempted to keep me full-time, I wasn't told this. Mom went so far as to even claim I was not my dad's child, and she knew who my father was and would use this to get full custody. Dad was undeterred. Even if I wasn't his child, he raised me, and he wasn't going to leave me in hell because of that. Paternity tests were ordered for both me and Cheryl, and I was my dad's child. Cheryl was not. Cheryl, however, did match the person my mom brought to be sampled. Scumbag Tom. Dad was still going between chuckling and sobbing for a few minutes, while telling me and my husband this. Then there was silence, which felt like it went on forever. I finally asked if scumbag Tom knew. Dad just nodded. I asked him how he felt about Cheryl. He said, You can't just turn off being someone's dad. No matter how shtty they turn out. I had my husband take my dad to the guest bedroom after he said he needed to lay down for a moment. Around noon, my phone started ringing. It was an unknown number, but I figured it was Cheryl. I picked you up, Cheryl. She was again begging for any sort of help. Stay with me, or money for a hotel, anything. I was tired, and I admit that I wanted to hurt her. So I told her. I told her who scumbag Tom was to her. She was quiet, then begged me to tell her I was lying. I just hung up. I told my husband and father what I did, and my dad just started that weird sobbing chuckle again. My husband, however, said we should probably call my aunt and let her know what I just told Cheryl, in case Cheryl becomes unstable and at least someone would be alert for it. I do feel bad that I dropped this on Cheryl as a way specifically to hurt her. I tried justifying that this isn't even a tenth of the hurt she's given me, but hurting someone doesn't feel good the longer I sit with it. Update. I am posting here in my profile for now. I don't know where this would belong, honestly. At everyone's advice, I did call my two cousins, and we had a real conversation. Whoever said my mom and sister controlled the narrative with that side of the family was right. According to my cousins, my dad was painted as a lowlife cheater, and I as a dropout drug addict who went man to man, I literally only had four boyfriends my entire life. So when my sister was kicked out, my aunt suggested she stay at my place. The cousins were confused. Wasn't I a druggie who couch surfed and was unemployed? Aunt apparently came up with a story that I speed ran adulthood in six months of getting clean, an online degree, a job, home, and husband. Now, both cousins never really liked my mom or sister. They just figured that if trash called me trash, I must have been super trash. I did tell them the truth about Cheryl and scumbag Tom, and both were disgusted with everyone involved. They made sure that the family had been sufficiently warned. Now, the next part apparently happened late last night, and I'm getting this secondhand. Cheryl apparently stopped back at mom's, and the three of them got into a big argument. Things were broken and thrown against the wall, and the cops were called. The cops showed up. Mom tried to get Cheryl kicked out but apparently Cheryl's legal address is mom's house, so the cops told her she couldn't be kicked out. Same with scumbag Tom's legal address, so as long as no one is actually assaulted, the cops don't care. 
I'm now making it a habit of putting all calls from unfamiliar numbers straight to voicemail. I got three from new numbers last night. Two were moms. First, she was crying, pleading for her to apologize to me and begging me to understand. The second was her screaming and cursing to the point of it devolving into noise. The third call was from scumbag Tom. Started with him going, hey kiddo. Deleted that one before it finished. I'm going to take the ring doorbell footage, the past legal case of the credit card, the voicemails, the texts, and the information from my cousins, and get some legal orders in place now. It's all just trash. Trash, trash, trash. Update. I mentioned on my profile that I cleared up the narrative about me to my cousins my mother and sister spun a tale that I was a hot mess. I couldn't keep a job, slept around, did drugs, couch surfed. When my sister was kicked out, my aunt decided to suggest Cheryl stay with me, which made my cousins confused. Wasn't I a hot mess? Aunt then made up the story that I got my life together. Got clean, a degree, a career, a house, and a husband in six months. Cousins were skeptical, but they thought that since my mom and sister were trash, if they called me trash, I must have been super trash, so they always kept a distance away. That's since been cleared up. For the most part, the cousins wanted to stay away from the epicenter of drama bombs. The next part I heard was from two of my cousins. Cheryl decided to head back home, and she and mom got into a big argument, and scumbag Tom decided to jump in. Cops were called, everyone's addresses were verified, and the cops' attitude was, since no one was assaulted, no one is allowed to kick anyone out, and left. I've been getting calls from all family members now. Mom, Cheryl and scumbag Tom go straight to voicemail, and I'm collecting as much of it as possible, and have been sending it to the police. My husband suggested we retain a lawyer to better handle this, which we will be doing in the next couple of days. Aunt is acting very apologetic, and keeps claiming, she didn't know the abuse was as intense as it was, and thought the problems I had with Cheryl wear stupid sibling stuff. But she said we shouldn't cut mom and Cheryl out of our lives just yet. No one else on mom's side of the family is willing to lend any help or support, except for aunt. I am however, getting more calls from cousins, second cousins, and other members of mom's family wanting to reconnect, now that they know the truth. I'm sort of not sure if I should even dedicate any time to them. They didn't lend my father or me any support during the divorce or afterwards. Part of me understands that it's because my mom and sister spun a hell of a narrative. But at least according to my cousins, her side of the family thought mom and Cheryl were trash anyways, but still associated with them. I might reconnect more with my aunt's kids, the two cousins, since they approached me when this whole mess started with confusion and asked for clarification. Not outright trying to browbeat me into accepting my sister into my home. Update. I've been getting some questions and stuff. Plus, there's a minor update. So here we go. People asked how my aunt and cousins had my number. And that's simple. I have had the same number since being a teenager. I've been weighing number switching, but that would mean changing the 2FA on all my apps and sign-ins, and honestly, Cheryl rarely calls, so it doesn't bother me. As for how Cheryl knew where I lived, that's because she's my effing psycho stalker. Literally, when I was in college and had a boyfriend, within a week she found him at a party and tried to hit on him. If she spent one-tenth the energy she spent stalking me to get a PI license, she would probably be the most successful PI in the state. Some people have suggested Cheryl's lack of hygiene could have meant scumbag. Tom has been grooming her and messing with her since we were kids. While that does make me a tiny bit sympathetic to Cheryl, I have to be honest. I haven't thought of her as family since I was a teenager. For the update, we've doubled up on home cameras, got a SHT file and an attorney, and an initial protective order in place for Cheryl, Mom and Scumbag Tom. An official hearing is upcoming, but the law moves slowly. My husband, Dad, and I have taken to scanning our cars for air tags lately. No bleeps yet, but I can't be too safe now. I had lunch with my two cousins, and they both suggested to Aunt Janice that if she cared about Cheryl so much, she should house her. The cousins told me that Janice broke down at that, and revealed that Janice was me. It turns out my mom and Janice had a very similar relationship to Cheryl and me, and Janice was the punching bag for my mom. Janice got so used to rolling over and taking it that she was confused that I refused to. Me refusing to take the role she had broke her, and she felt even more steadfast that she had to have me submit like she did, as a weird, twisted way to prove that she wasn't wrong for submitting all those years. Janice has booked with a family therapist because she said saying that out loud made her feel psychotic. My two cousins said that, other than my mom, Janice was an exemplary mother, so I somewhat believe in Janice's trauma. I do feel bad for her. Maybe she will get through this. I hope she does. My cousins understand that we can't have a close cousin relationship because we weren't raised that way. 
but we will see if we can be friends at the very least. Second story. Narcissistic mom made OP believe her father abandoned her. But the truth is he was forced by mom to cut ties with OP. And mom took her only for her inheritance. Sorry for my terrible English. I 19F grew up with a single mom. Growing up, I was always told my father abandoned me. It happened when I was around 10 when I asked my mom about my dad. And she told me straight away that he abandoned me. I cried so much that day. It's not a joke. As I grew older, I hated him, even though I never met him. I thought that if he came back, I would scream at him, ruin him, and attack him for leaving. Last week, my mom and I were at her friend's house. I went along because I'm friends with her friend's daughter. Well, fast forward. I came down the stairs and heard her say my name. She revealed my dad's name and said, It's easy to keep a father out of a kid's life. Like what I did with Lena's my father after I found out he cheated on me. She was also talking about how pathetic he looked when he pleaded with her to stay in my life. She also added how she used his old drug addiction against him in court. So, from what I understand, he was sober before I was born. I made contact with my biological dad as soon as we got home. The next morning, I got a reply. He asked for my number so we could talk. The first thing my dad said when he called was to apologize. He told me it was all his fault. After talking with him for a while, I told him I'd love to have a relationship with him. He lives not far from our city, a two-hour drive. As for my mom, she is at work. I sent her a text telling her about what I heard, and I'll be cutting off contact with her for a while and probably forever. Edit. So I did not mention this in a comment about the house. I inherited my uncle's house after he died, and that is when mom started acting weird. She believed that the house belonged to her and fought with my grandfather over it. But he put his foot down and told her it's my house. Secondly, when I turned 18 and moved into the house, my mom came along. I didn't want to live with her again, but she told me she'd cut off my college fund. Well, now my grandpa has told me he'll pay for my college. Also, more about my mom. When my parents split up, my grandfather told her he didn't support her decision to keep my father out of my life. But she told him he would never see either. Also, my mom acts like my house belongs to her and always tells me, technically, it's my house and should have been given to me. Edit 2. Another thing was that my father quit drugs long before he met her. I confessed to this, and I was told by my grandpa, not long after telling my mom, she was no longer in my house, that my dad loved me with all his heart, when I was only a couple of months old. Apparently, my dad almost made it impossible for others to hold me. The next thing is that my dad did confess to cheating. I already asked my mom to explain her side, and she said yes, he did quit drugs long before he met her. However, that's about it. So far, all she wants is for me to forgive her. I did ask my dad for his side. He hasn't replied yet, but he told me he'd call me later. Update. First of all, thanks so much for the support. I'm surprised my post got so much support. I cannot thank you enough. But anyway, on to the update. So I met up with my dad at a restaurant today. He thought it would be better to talk in person. I was shocked when I saw him. He looked to be in great shape, but I could tell he was crying. When I approached him, he pulled me into a hug and apologized a few more times for not being there, saying that he really wants to fix it while he has a chance. We started talking, and there was much more to the story than my dad just being a cheater. So here it goes. During my mom's pregnancy, she constantly put my dad down. Like she would tell him, you should be happy you're with me and not some unimportant bee, or you're not good enough for me, I'm just with you for the sake of our child. My dad said that he thought it was just her pregnancy hormones, but then it got worse after I was born. Her ego was through the roof. But what really took the cake was when I said, It's such a shame my daughter will probably grow up to be a failure like her father. I was taken aback by this. I asked my dad if that's the reason he cheated, and he said no. He should have just called off the wedding, but instead he cheated. He apologized a few more times and told me he loves me, that he never forgot about me, and that when I texted him for the first time, he couldn't believe it was me until he saw my profile picture. We both cried for a while until our breakfast arrived. Now on to my mom. I just want to add that my mom started threatening me after I told her she was getting evicted. But at first it went from pathetic apologies to full-on threats. She told me she'd ruin me if I abandoned her. Make sure I lost everything. Anyway, after speaking to my dad, I wanted to see if my mom would confirm it. And she did not feel shame. She admitted it like it was a effing achievement with no remorse, may I add. Then she went back to sweet talks and back, threatening me. Someone told me, I should see if I could forgive her, and probably not go to NC. After today, I doubt I want anything to do with her. 
I also think she's the one who told all my ex-boyfriends that they were not good enough because they all broke up with me shortly after meeting her without any explanation. I'm done with her. My grandpa told me he'd help me with the eviction and possibly a restraining order due to the threats. I am going to visit my dad as soon as she's out of the house. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.